Good evening, and I'll start by telling you the topic of this presentation. Obviously, I wanted to share my experience and like general outlook on how the jobs to be done framework was introduced into Stepstone. Quickly about me, I am a senior product manager at Stepstone. Obviously, I also used to work in Skype, which was an amazing adventure. And speaking of adventures, I'm also one of the top 10 content creators on LinkedIn when it comes to product management. And I've trained at least 20,000 people in, um, well, product management. And if I was there with you, I would challenge you to ask me about my Guinness World Record or the fact that I was featured in, on a Times Square um, billboard quite recently. Though, unfortunately, I couldn't be there with you. But I'm here in this box and I want to tell you about how the jobs to be done framework was introduced in steps. Very quickly, I just want to say that though the framework, as you can see on the right hand side, is quite complex in its steps and how to apply it and not easy to fit in a short presentation, it all comes down to identifying what are the actual user needs? And the um, example that's hammered home is that your clients don't need a drill, they need a hole in the wall. So how does this translate to Stepstone? Well, the way we work, we are organically as a job board connecting people to the right jobs or the right uh, offers to the people that need job. However, it's not always user centric. Sometimes we are business centric and a lot of things that would not go through to our prioritization process, our road mapping process would have that job seeker in the center attention. So with the jobs to be done, as also Loris mentioned, we worked tirelessly to talk to thousands of people and we managed to identify a wide spectrum of different pain points, different fears, different self-doubts that plague people who look for jobs. And funny enough, everyone, everyone in this room was unemployed at some point. We know those pain points. We all suffer through them. And yet, when it comes to being in the business of finding jobs, we discovered we are not that user-centric. Because what we did, we very honestly looked in different groups at the well, our roadmaps, our plans for the future, our initiatives that we want to introduce, and ask ourselves, are we addressing the core pain points that, was, that were identified in that research? Not really. At least in the groups that I've been, people were struggling because, frankly, it was a bit of a painful experience. Because on one hand, you're looking at tasks that are there to help the business, help the job seeker, that all are metrics, all our frameworks tell us they are the right thing to do next. But somehow the job seeker was left out of it based on those uh, pain points. So the core thing after this sometimes disappointing experience was where developers, UX uh, specialists, other engineers asking, where will it go? What, what does this workshop mean? Because, well, we've been on workshops that don't go anywhere, right? We'll meet together, we'll brainstorm, we'll have fun time, fun ideas. And yet, sometimes, very often, it will just get forgotten, derailed, and different priorities will <clears throat> overcome what we wanted to achieve with a workshop. Did it happen this time? I don't think so. There was always a good plan on what to do with those specific workshops. And 
for me and for few of my colleagues, the fact that we had a new vision, new understanding on how we impact our users with our tasks moved us to a different level of prioritization and prioritization, choosing the right tasks to include in the product is always the greatest challenge of any product manager. If you look at this slide, and I don't want to read it because I promised you 10 minutes and I feel like I'm writing some new levels of energy that would lead me to a 20 minute talk. There's a lot of it. There's a lot of things you have to consider. Normally, at least I go to something called value effort chart, but this is like just the basics. There are so many layers of prioritization that even include politics, mm, delivering on your promises, making the team happy. It's a complex matrix. And yet, look at this list. There is no user pain points, or there were it, because our eyes were open. We were reminded of who we serve, and that led us to, well, embracing the user. Not immediately. It's not like we had a eureka moment, took everything we had in our roadmaps and replaced it with user centricity. No. But looking at the mirror and seeing what is there and not being comfortable means that we can reflect. We can ask ourselves whether the things that business appears to favor really resonates with the user. And don't get me wrong, the, we no business can really afford to be fully user-centric. Sometimes there will be times where you can embrace those risky, sometimes niche initiatives that will address those pain points. Sometimes in the time of crisis where every penny counts, we'll have to protect our jobs and do whatever is necessary to keep the company running. But the honesty of saying this is a business centric feature, this is a user centric feature, brings a new level to tra of transparency to any stories regarding changes in the product. And speaking of stories, for me, it was much easier to talk to my developers to explain them what I want to do and what is the business perspective, but also how it connects to the pain points of the user. I'm now trying to improve onboarding in the mobile app of native applications. And the task I'm doing there is addressing pain point of not knowing what's my well, the job title. Where it also has a business aspect, but with jobs to be done, I can easily craft a story and connect it to that cool person who's looking at our first screen on onboarding and ask and asks oneself, who am I? What am I looking for? Who will hire me? And really, one thing that I also really loved about jobs to be done, those pain points we identified is that we now see new growth opportunities. The pain points that are clearly there, that thousands of people said, I'm suffering from that. I need this problem fixed. No one fixed those problems. Not Indeed, not Monster, not LinkedIn, no. And those are universal because, as I said, we all felt them. Even if we are working the job board, we have a job, we forget about it. You forget about the bad memories and you focus on the positive ones. This is how your brain works. And really, this is what for me was jobs to be done. This is what I took and what business took from introducing those to everyone there in the room. We are now more honest with each other. We will prioritize better, we'll tell better stories, deliver better product. And I know for a fact that those 
pain points and jobs to be done will be incorporated in the future versions of our strategy and how we approach the market. Because this makes sense user-centric wise, business wise and empathy wise. Thank you.